Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Seven Dials Mystery by Agatha Christie. So I believe this is, uh, what is his name, Inspector Battle, uh, one of those novels. I'm going to read you the blurb, and then I'm going to go through and share some of my tabs, and then we'll come back at the end and share overall thoughts and ratings. So, each step of the puzzle was more confusing, more macabre, and more bizarre than the last. The young man dying in the road who hadn't been run over. The letter that said, forget about The Seven Dials business. I thought it was a joke, but it isn't. White flowers arranged on the coverlet, reflecting the whiteness of a dead young face. Seven clocks ticking on the mantelpiece, ticking loudly, ominously. Number seven raising his hand very slowly to his head, fumbling with the fastening of the mask. Now what I will say is, um, I actually quite kind of empathised with the murder victim in this, which is quite rare for me with an Agatha Christie. I don't know why, it's just, um, I don't know, it just, it is quite often hard to kind of empathise with those characters. But he's like a, a sort of a spoiled young man who's, who stays in bed too late basically, so I saw some, re re you know, resemblances to my own life there. So we're going to read a few of those bits actually. Um, Oh dear, I suppose he will come down sometime, Treadwell. Oh, undoubtedly, my lady. It was 11.30 yesterday morning when Mr. Wade came down, my lady. Lady Coote glanced at the clock. It was now 20 minutes to 12. A wave of human sympathy rushed over. It's very hard luck on you, Treadwell, having to clear and then get lunch on the table by one o'clock. I am accustomed to the ways of young gentlemen, my lady. The, pr the reproof was dignified but unmistakable. So might a prince of the church reprove a Turk or an infidel who had unwittingly committed a solecism in all good faith. Let me get this conversation here. You don't mean to say, said Bill Eversley, that Jerry Wade's not up yet. Something ought to be done about it. If he's not careful, said Ronnie Devereux, he'll miss his breakfast altogether one day. Find it's lunch or tea instead when he rolls down. Uh, Lady Coote says, I've heard Sir Oswald say so many times that there's nothing for getting a young man on in the world like punctual habits. And then basically... <laughs> That she spells the word alarm clock, by the way, A-L-A-R-U-M, which, to be fair, is how the word alarm, I suppose, originally was. Um, but yeah, they get a bunch of alarm clocks and set them and then put them under this guy's bed to wake him up. This made me chuckle. I don't know which are the worst, powerful personalities or earnest politicians. I do so prefer the cheerful and efficient. And then this, then this sort of accident happens where someone thinks they've hit somebody with their car and they haven't, and we get this little bit. Um, I haven't been to London, said Bundle. I ran over a man. What? Only I didn't really. He was shot. How could he have been? I don't know how he could have been, but he was. But why did you shoot him? I didn't shoot him. You shouldn't shoot people, said Lord Caterham in a tone of mild remonstrance. You shouldn't really. I dare say some of them richly deserve it, but all the same it will lead to trouble. Wait, so he actually thinks that she shot somebody and he's like that calm about it, that blasé. I mean, I shouldn't do that. Uh, we get a reference to German, German Street, J-E-R-M-Y-N, which is a street in London. Um, part of my first book, Driven, takes place at a theatre there. I like this bit as well. Someone just goes, that's a good word, Stevens, a shoe. I met it in a crossword the other day and took a fancy to it. Uh, Lorraine says, uh, why are men so happy when they're single? Why are they so much better looked after by other people than us? Uh, so I feel like I have a lot of habits that would annoy Agatha Christie because here she says as well um, Not only that, but the brute is always biting his fingernails positively gnaws at them. Yeah, I do that And then someone is uh, full of pitying ejaculations about the poor young gentleman All right So I've got a few more tabs here to share in the seven dials mystery and then my uh, final th thoughts and rating I do think it, uh, it was kind of cool because this one followed on from uh, the secret of chimneys Which I read not too long ago as well. And so I kind of enjoyed um, the references from one book to another. We get this bit that's uh, very in uh, politically incorrect. I'm just going to read it out and you, you can judge of it <laughs> yourself. Um, okay. Oh, you're, you're an ass, said Bundle. I heard somebody say so last night. Who? To be strictly accurate, a Russian Jew. No, it wasn't. It was but an indignant protest around her words. I may be an ass, said Jimmy. I dare say I am. But I won't have Russian Jews saying so. Uh, so with that Agatha Christie, I always spot the ejaculations that we have on here. Um, he uttered a sharp ejaculation, which brought the three young people quickly to his side. And we get this little exchange here, which obviously um, references um, Alice in Wonderland. I say, Bundle, said Jimmy anxiously, you haven't been reading too much sensational literature, have you? Bundle threw him a glance of dignified reproach. Well, said Jimmy, I'm not yet like the Red Queen. I can't believe six impossible things before breakfast. I enjoyed this little uh, exchange here as well. I find girls very perplexing, said Lady Coot. Not romantic, you know. 
Why, I embroidered some handkerchiefs for Sir Oswald with my own hair when we were engaged. Did you? said Jimmy. How marvellous! But I suppose girls haven't got long enough hair to do that nowadays. That's true, admitted Lady Coo. But oh, it shows in lots of other ways. I remember when I was a girl, one of my, well, my young men, picked up a handful of gravel and a girl who was with me said at once that he was treasuring it because my feet had trodden on it. Such a pretty idea, I thought. Though it turned out afterwards that he was taking a course of mineralogy, or do I mean geology, uh, a technical school. But I liked the idea, and stealing a girl's handkerchief and treasuring it, all those sorts of things. Awkward if the girl wanted to blow her nose, said the practical Mr. Thysiger. And then we get this line, Lord Caterham tore it open. He uttered a pained ejaculation and turned upon his daughter. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Uh, anyway, overall I did really enjoy this. I mean, um, I think it did help that I read the other battle book before this one, so um, I did spot a lot of the things that kind of carried over from one book to another. I quite like the battle books. I do find they lose a bit of momentum towards the end though. Um, but overall, yeah, I did enjoy it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. And that's one more Agatha Christie book ticked off. I don't have many left to read now. So there we have it, that's what I thought of The Seven Dials Mystery by Agatha Christie. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.